Hi, I'm Glenn Lumsden and I'm the social media coordinator here at vision to learn um, I just wanted to share uh, my story today um, with it being World Arthritis Day. Um, just feel like it's you know something that uh, you know is very close to home for myself. Um, I hate showing people my fingernails. They look like I take no care over them at all. Looks like I've got some sort of fungal nail infection, uh, as you can probably see here. And it was about 15 years ago um, it started. I, I spent two years trying to get rid uh, of something that wasn't there. Um, turned out it wasn't a fungal nail infection. It was psoriasis in my nail ducts. Um, apart from visually looking horrible, it didn't really bother me. Um, so I carried on as normal uh, until around about six years ago. Um, I woke up with a, a real terrible pain in my thumb and uh, forefinger. At that time, I was very active. Um, I was a goalkeeper, played football weekly, um, lifted weights in the gym four nights a week. Um, and initially, the, the pain I was getting, really, I put down to doing weights um, in the gym. Um, and having broken a finger in the same hand a few years previous to that, the pain was very similar. Uh, but was gradually getting worse, uh, and over a few weeks uh, to the point it was, you know, it was waking me up at night. Um, I went to the doctor, just fully expecting to be told that I had a fracture of some kind um, in my hand, until my GP noticed the, the psoriasis and asked me what it was. Uh, luckily for me, um, she had recently been on a training course and spotted immediately, um, due to the swelling in my thumb and my finger, that I, am, you know, I in fact had psoriatic arthritis. Um, now at the time being early 30s, um, it did set us back a little bit because you, you always associate arthritis as an old person's thing. You know, a manual labourers after you know decades of working, the, you know, working their bones to, to you know grinding them down. Um, not from this innocuous little thing in my nail duct, you know, to cause so much pain in my fingers. Uh, I took I took some advice, you know, uh, kept an eye on it, and taking the odd painkiller when needed. Carried you know carried on through through the pain as normal. But little did I know, um, you know, within a year, I had to start making some massive lifestyle changes, um, dealing with strong medication, looking at diet, pain relief, flaring, time off work, tiredness, and a lot of frustration. Um, I was a new parent at the time, and um, sometimes the pain was so bad in all, all my fingers and in my left hand that, you know, it soon spread to my right hand. I couldn't open a baby gate, and I couldn't even open the front door at times. You know, the burning heat through the night in my bones led to terrible fatigue. I had to stop playing football um, and doing any high-impact sports and exercise. It took years of figuring out how to push my body, you know, what I can and couldn't do. Um, now, a big day came about four years ago. I'd been advised to take methotrexate, which is a, a immunosuppressant drug that slows down your, your immune system to reduce the inflammation. Uh, I had put full trust in what I was being told to that point. Um, you know, the drug wasn't working uh, and I was aware of a few side effects, but not all. I was advised to start injecting the medication um, in higher doses and I got all the kits sent to my house. Uh, a nurse was booked in um, to come and show me how to do it. And what turned out really to be quite a sliding doors moment, um, I accidentally closed the lid on the shorts box um, I was provided, meaning I couldn't, I couldn't reopen it. Um, and the nurse couldn't show me what to do until a, f a new one was ordered uh, and she booked me back in the following week to see me uh, for some reason uh, for once um, two years into all this I decided to do my own bit of research into the disease um, I found methotrexate it was a toxic drug and amongst a whole host of other side effects um, if me and my wife wanted to have a second baby it could end the pregnancy um, or cause severe birth defects so that alone ended my use of medication immediately um, I investigated alternative therapy like physiotherapy and acupuncture. Um, I investigated anti-inflammatory foods, CBD oils, low-impact exercise, anything and everything um, to help me get on top of the disease. Uh, so for the last four years, I have managed to keep on top of it by regularly drinking things like turmeric tea, eating oily fish, berries, tomatoes. I go swimming and I ride a bike very regular because they're low-impact. Um, and I've even taken up karate over the past um, year. Uh, you know, back into doing that, so, something that I, I, I quit 20 odd years ago. Uh, I go to a cryo chamber as well, you know, like Ronaldo does now, but, um, you know, just to suppress the flare ups when I need to because it chills you down to minus 180 degrees. Um, but the biggest thing that really changed my life was acupuncture. I've used modern and traditional, uh, and it almost makes me feel back to my normal self. Um, now, I'm not going to pretend, uh, you know, I don't occasionally get, you know, you know, have the odd flare up and I have to take 
strong anti-inflammatory um, drugs, um, especially when it rains so much here in sunny Manchester. Um, but taking control of my own health and educating myself on what my body can and can't take has probably saved me years of pain uh, and reliance on toxic medication that could have done more damage to us. Now, it won't work for everybody, but hopefully this at least can help you know one person out there cope with a you know a debilitating, painful, and at times you know hidden disease. All right.